Good morning for me. I seriously still have a case of like morning voice, just barely waking up. Ah. How we doing today? <clears throat> so, um, I won't say too much, I guess, before anybody gets here, but I have a few things we're going to talk about today. We definitely have good morning, Daniel. Oh, good evening from Japan. Hey, William. Hi, fellas. Thanks for showing up. Paul's here. Fantastic. Jason. Alexander. I like how you spell that. That's cool. All right. From Georgia. Hey, Jason. Cool, cool, cool. Look at all these guys. Glenn, Risto, Joe, Jefferson. Awesome. Man, you guys are fantastic. Look at you. Cool. Croatia. That's amazing. Belgium. Germany. Columbus. Sorry, man. Well, I mean, you guys won, but... I'm sorry that you're from Columbus. <laughs> uh, um, Egypt, good grief. So cool. Haven't gotten in a live stream for a long time. Well, I'm glad you're here today, man. Macedonia, oh, that's cool. Another late night. Wish it was earlier. Sorry, dude. Um, I, You know, next week, I won't be able to do it at this time. Uh, so it'll be, if it's going to happen, it'll be later in the evening on Sunday here. So early in the morning for all you guys that are having it really late right now. I know. I've, I've, oh, I'm sorry, Jason. I'm sorry you're an Ohio State fan. But finally, we're going to have a game that's going to mean something this year. We're not gonna, just going to roll over and let you guys whoop us. All right. <clears throat> New Jersey, Colorado. Fantastic. Everyone in Mexico. Sorry I'm not going to watch the stream today. Oh, sorry, Luis. Putting up holiday lights today. They are a pain. Sorry, Mark. They are a pain. But if you put them up, I mean, are you doing it our way like the programmable LEDs. If you do it once this time, you'll never have to do it again. That's the beauty, right? That's the beauty. All right. So let's start out. We definitely have a good group already. I got a hundred people going. So it's, it's time. Belarus. So cool, man. You guys are amazing. Been watching videos for a while. First time I could make the live stream. Awesome. Awesome. I like doing the live streams, man. I like them. It's a, it's fun and it's easy for me. And I think we can get a lot of stuff, a lot of information out. And, um, so it, I like doing them. They're good. Okay. So topic number one, let's talk about what I've been calling, um, MQTT Mageddon or, um, mosquito apocalypse. <laughs> okay. How many of you raise your hand if your, um, MQTT broker totally imploded on Sunday night last this past Sunday night mine did my it, not only did it implode it had also ruined my entire um, has IO installation on my Pi. so and I'm not and it I'm not alone it happened to a lot of people so I'm gonna take a couple minutes um, and explain kind of what happened and what you need to do to try and fix it you're still on Haspian 0.7. Good job, curmudgeon. You're, you're, you're safe for now. Well, maybe forever on that. I don't know. Um, so here's what happened. Let me, let, let's move over the scene here and, uh, we'll go through kind of what went down. So you, if you had, um, I think I took it out completely, but, um, MQTT. Yeah. Okay. So here's my, here's what I had in my configuration.yaml. And this is what most of us had that have had it installed for a while. We had a broker section, an MQTT broker section that looks something like this. So you called out MQTT as the top, as the, the top line here, and you've got some broker information and your user and password and stuff. Okay. Then, and that was fine. And then along came the add on the HASIO add-on for Mosquito. And so we all, there's my password, fantastic. So we all set that up. Um, it, let me get move that off the screen and just delete that for a second. I don't really care, but we'll just pop that out. It won't be that big a deal. If you guys aren't on my local network, you won't be able to hack my Mosquito. Anyways, so then you had this uh, broker installed and you had a configuration here. And um, everything was fine um, as that was, even though it shouldn't have been fine, is my understanding. Then what happened is um, on Sunday night, 
Mosquito went from version, if you had it on auto update, which I now do not have, but if you had it on auto update on, on Sunday night, then you, you automatically went from version two points, whatever it was to three to version three. When that happened, it, it, um, no longer accepted the, the idea of having the, well, there's one more part. Let me tell you the one more part. The other part was, um, where is it at in configuration and integrations here? So, and I don't understand exactly all the details of what's happening inside of this, but essentially because we had a broker uh, set up in the configuration.yaml file and the add-on, uh, which then became integrated, which whatever that means, but it became integrated here. There was, uh, it seemed to me, two, two brokers, two MQTT brokers working like on the same IP in the same port at the same time and everything just imploded. <laughs> so here's the fix. Okay. If you have, hopefully everybody's fixed it by now, but here's the fix. The fix is, um, you take out, where did my, where did my configuration go? You, you take out this section of your, of your, um, configuration YAML file, this, this broker, you can just comment it all out. You don't need that in there anymore. Then what I did to fix it was you go to the add on the mosquito add on. It's probably gonna show my password again. Fantastic. And you stop it. Okay. Um, if you have it into, if you have the integration in, uh, here, you can, you can delete it right here with this is, you can't see it, but there's a little, there's a little trash can right up here. So you delete that integration. Then you can go to, uh, back to the, um, broker there, the uh, add on, and, uh, then you can update it and start it. Okay. And then when you, after you've started it back up again, I don't even think you need, I think the configuration, you don't need the configuration information in there anymore. This, what was in this box down here, if it doesn't work, if you don't put anything in that configuration, and it doesn't work, then I guess go back and put, put in your username and password and stuff. But what happens when you go to, I know this is probably confusing because I'm going kind of fast, but when you go to this integrations, you'll have, instead of having, if you've deleted it up here, down here, you'll have one that says, um, MQTT, um, just like this. And if you, I don't remember if it says MQTT mosquito or just MQTT, but anyways, if you, when you pick that, you pick configure, it'll give you a box and that'll let you put in your IP address, your user, your password. It'll let you pick whether or not you want discovery. And, um, once you've started that, everything goes back to normal. You'll have discovery again. You're, you'll have one IP address again, uh, one broker again, and it all works. So it was, a it was an unfortunate, um, what I, what I understood was there was a bug that was allowing us essentially to function the way we were with, with two brokers set up. But, um, when, when Mosquito got updated to three, then I don't know if that bug got fixed or if there was some other issue or something changed that, uh, made it. So it was the, the way we had it working was no longer okay. And it just self-destructed and everybody's home assistant was completely down for, a couple of days and um, it was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. But I guess we learned a lot and um, th that's the nature of, uh, you know, this, this kind of open source project. Um, we've got a lot of good people doing a lot of things um, on their own for volunteering. You know, some people got mad and you can't get mad. You can't get mad at, you know, anybody um, for something like that. You just, uh, it's, it's what happens when, when, when it's this kind of a system. So, no big deal. We get it fixed, you know, by the next bike. It took, I spent most of Monday, uh, trying to fix it. Um, Mark M helped me a ton, but now I'm back to normal and it's probably better. So anyways, that was a quick, quick rundown of, um, MQTT Mageddon. <laughs> so, but it works this way now. And I think it's supposed to be a lot better. I think might have, part of the problem might've been the authentication too, but um, yeah. So if you do, if you do MQTT now, Jason, it's easier, much easier. Just skip. I don't know what the setup says. If uh, my guess is they fixed the docs, uh, the documentation in home assistant as well. Let's see. Um, let's go home assistant and MQ. Oh, oh gosh. Don't want all that. Um, mosquito. Cause maybe now the setup, maybe what they've done here is, is fixed. Oh, I don't want that one. We want this one. 
Um, user management, access control list. So maybe it's not. Maybe they haven't updated the docs yet. Maybe maybe somebody like me or somebody should go in and fix, uh, talk about that. But anyways, it's working now. I'm sorry for all the disasters that everybody experienced. It was very frustrating for all of us. But MQTT again, yeah. Well, when we didn't need to, um, yeah, I, I, I made that mistake, Chris, exactly what happened. I, I had my, um, this broker set up for, um, so I keep doing it with my password. Well, that's great. Anyways, I had this, I had this broker set up and, uh, I had it set to auto update and, um, it just, just when it updated, there was a problem. And anyways, we're all better now, right? Everything's fixed. Happy days. Happy days. Hey, from India. How's it going? Um, wait, I had to put user and password in the add-on. Did you? I, I, so um, if you didn't put user and password in the add-on and it worked, then fine. Don't worry about it. I think when you, if you just start it, if you just start the add-on and then go to the integration and configure it there, I think that does the same thing. I'm not 100%, but it is working now, and it's working. Okay, good. So there you go, Dems. So so now we know. You, you just proved it to us. So you don't have to put all that information, that the password and all that garbage that I just showed everybody, in that um, configuration box on the add-on. When you start the add-on, then you just go to the integrations page, um, and it will it will let you put all those things in. So... What you got there, Ralph? Is that is that what this is? Oh, good. So this is the, was this the fix? Yeah. Anyways, all right, we got it. All right, Nigel, how's it going, man? Okay, so the poll results. You guys like doing the polls? Uh, answering the, the the question about what you want to do for the live stream. I do. I think that's a great way to do it. So hopefully it's working well. The one, the thing that won today, the, the topic that won today by quite a bit, actually quite a large margin was sec security cameras and motion detection. That's like a huge topic. <laughs> so, and I, and I know, you know, about this much of, of everything that you could know about security cameras and motion detection in, in home assistant. So, um, but I can tell you what I do know and that, and we'll go with that. Um, so let's do that. Shall we, as you guys probably know, if you've been looking at my, um, setup for a while, I have, um, a bunch of blink cameras. I've got several different types of cameras, but the, the ones that we use the most, you like my little, this is my solarized Solarized theme for today. Better link. Oh, thank you, Ralph. We'll do that one. Um, do I have flashing Fano 2? I do not, but I think uh, Travis DigiBlur is working on one. I have those fan units. I just haven't used them. <clears throat> the bridge between cloud MQTT and MQTT will no longer work, or I don't know how to make it work. Holy badges. Yeah, this is not my... This is... This is Let's try this instead. How's that? That better? <laughs> I never clean up that main overview page anymore because I, when I want to actually look for things, I just go to Lovelace. All right. So my cameras, let's talk about my cameras. So I have, um, did I update this? No, it got, we lost, remember the work we did on my Lovelace last weekend? I lost it all and I haven't, I haven't uh, gone back to fix it. So, um, what I have on my, for my cameras is blink, which actually I need to go back to the main overview for, um, I have blink cameras. So these cameras that you're seeing over here, these are blink. And, um, until very recently, until I think it was 0 0.81, um, they were pretty useless. You could pull in uh, an image like this and you could zoom in on it a little bit. But that's it. You couldn't update it. It wouldn't do, even though the cameras had the ability to capture video, to do motion detection, um, 
you couldn't get any of that stuff. You could get the temperature from them. You could get some of their battery information and stuff, but you couldn't actually get images. So they were fairly useless. Um, but there was a new Blink um, component update, and now it is fantastic and totally useful. So what they were able to add with this new with this new component is um, a bunch of uh, stuff about getting the pictures. So here we go. You can now do these services or these commands, right? Blink trigger camera. And then you just name the camera that you want to trigger and boom, you get a new image. It, you can see the little light come on the camera and it takes it an image. This part, this save video part, I couldn't get working just yet. There's something about being able to write to a director, but don't worry about that. And then blink update, you can just, uh, it'll update all the images. It won't take a new picture. It'll just go to the, to the blink servers and grab whatever the latest image is. Sometimes if you do blink trigger, it seems to give you a new image. And sometimes if you, sometimes you have to do blink update to get it, to get it working. So, um, essentially the, oh, and then the biggest, most, I think mo another super important part of this is you can now use motion detection on the cameras so if you look at my my disgusting huge pile of badges you can now see that all of my blink cameras have a motion detected badge right so this will change so what i can do oh and they set they set it up as an alarm panel too so watch what happens um i set i turn on the alarm it only goes through um, arm, arm home doesn't do anything. So it's only arm away. But if I click arm away, then this will arm. Boom. Now it's armed. And now when I, you can see here, I am in the mountain room. So when I move around a little bit here, I should get something. It's always fun to do this stuff live. See if it actually works. We'll see. I should get something. I've moved around a bit. Oh, oh yep. There it goes. Okay. So I'll get, oh man, thanks. Oh, Fiction, you're awesome, dude. I, you're, I appreciate it. You were easy to help. That was, that was no problem. Hopefully those get, the, I'll have to check the mail before it's done and see if we get, see if we got anything. All right. So let's see, did we get anything showing up on the mountain room detection yet? Nope. Well, maybe it's not super fast, but let's see. Did we get an updated picture? Nope. <laughs> Super good. Okay, there it goes. Now we finally got it, right? So now there's motion detected on the mountain room camera. Fantastic. So the reason that this is so cool is because now I can use this um, to do other things, right? I'm going to disarm this or else it's going to just be going off all the time right now, all over the house and everywhere else. Um, all right. So let me show you what I did with that. So now I went into my automations and I made some some new automations. Um, this first bunch of automations is really simple, but, and what they do is just take that, uh, if the motion detection is triggered, so in one of the rooms, the camera detects motion, then it will trigger that camera to take a new image. Cool, right? So we should go back and look and see if that worked. There should be a new image in the in the mountain room. There's not. So sometimes what you have to do is the update. Let's see if refreshing it does it. Nope. So then we'll, what we'll have to do is I'll have to have it do an update right after that. Sometimes it just takes a minute. Um, but we can go service. There we go. Blink update. Call service. Yeah, still doesn't. Still gonna take some time, I guess. Ah, well, it does work. <laughs> Love it when you, yeah, cloud delay probably. Travis, let's, let's hope it'll show up eventually. It, it's working. I was playing with it all this weekend, and uh, and and it's it's much better. So the blink cameras, I'm not sure I would still say, oh yeah, everybody should get blank cameras. We got them before I started any of this home automation stuff and I was just happy that they would work and the app works and if there's motion, you can go and watch a little video for 10 seconds about what the motion was. Um, and now they're much more integrated into Home Assistant, but they're still not perfect. They're great for because they're battery powered. That's what makes the blank cameras worth 
anything is you can mount one anywhere you want, but you don't have to worry about running a cable like this one that's in a tree in the front yard, right? So um, then another thing that I did, let's, let's run this automation. So the other automation that I did was this one. So I set up an input Boolean that I just called blink refresh. And when I turn it on, it will trigger a new image from all of these cameras and it will run the blink update service. Um, and then it will turn the Boolean back off, but so what? Um, I guess I don't have to do this anymore, right? I think there's a way to do this automatically, but anyways. So let's run that one. So if we go back to our, back to this main page, we can find my input Boolean, which I'm gonna make a button on my Blink cameras right here. So if I turn that on, okay. And it'll hopefully, we'll start seeing some updated pictures here before too long. So, man, it's, it's, it knows that we're live. So it's not, it doesn't want to do any of this. <laughs> uh, did you see the new update for Hassio that supports TensorFlow? I did see that uh, image recognition. Yeah, I did see that. That looks exciting, right? That looks very exciting. So if we go, uh, let's look at that because it's here, right? I'm not going to update right now, but let's look at the release notes. Um, Oh, this is cool too. I mean, I'm going to try this in the new, so this new 8.2, you're going to be able to um, see the configuration for your Lovelace cards as you're configuring them. Isn't that cool? But they're, they're like, the, the, what are they calling it? It's an experimental alpha ultra raw. <laughs> so it's going to break most likely. Like if you, if, if you try it, um, there's going to be a lot of bugs because it's just barely, it's just barely um, working. Wouldn't a script be better for that? Maybe, you know, maybe I just do what I know how to do <laughs> Tristan and I know how to do automations. So if an automation will work, that's what I do. Um, uh, eventually we're going to get new images here. I'm sure. There we go. Look at that. We got new images. There's the back of my head. Uh, this is, these are all from today. The, that room hasn't changed. That room hasn't changed, but now it's sunny outside and the backyard looks like we got some rain or something last night. Didn't even notice that. So, yay, it works finally, right? So Ray says, Hick Vision, nine of them running great cam cameras for the price. Yeah, that, I've heard a lot of good things about Hick Vision. I might have to do that. But I've got so many of these um, dang blank cameras now. But um, can you pick an area of the image where you want to detect motion? On mine, you can't. Um, but you, that's, uh, let's see, you can do that with motion. I, I believe can you, who's, who's been using the motion I add on. I haven't been using the motion I add on because I was running everything on a pie and I was afraid that it would just not work very good. Oh my gosh. Installed MQT last night. Can you provide insight to complete this YAML as MQTT publish color RTB, uh, put your, put your numbers in quotes. The numbers need to be in quotes as well. So you have R in quotes and then you need 255 in quotes and 100 in quotes. That's, I would try that first. I don't, you know, it depends on what your, you know, what's receiving that, um, that MQTT message and how it's going to interpret that. But I, definitely I, I would think you need to have those, those numbers in quotes. Motion eye on the pie slows the pie down. Yeah, yeah. I think motion eye on a pie is probably not going to work very well. But I've got, um, I started uh, with a VM install now. So I'm not not actually using the pie right now. This this here is all on a virtual machine um, running on this Windows machine that I have that it's got plenty of horsepower. And uh, it's working good. It's nice and fast when you like restart and all those things. It's fantastic. Works really well. So big thanks to Mark M for helping me do that. So you've got Hick Vision as well. Um, how about Blue Iris? What do you guys What do you guys think about that? I I downloaded it and I inst and I installed it and I just haven't run it to set it up yet. Um, I I want to do it. I just don't know if, for sure how well it's gonna how well it's gonna work. And I just really need. I love my Blink cameras, but I'm gonna I need different ones. I, I do have a couple others. Well, it's, so here's another problem. I have a couple other like I have an Amcrest and I have a um, Amcrest and uh, oh, what was the other brand? It starts with an F. Anyways, they um, 
they used to work with home assistant and I could actually even like look at them and, um, you know, it was live, you know, which is another problem with the blink cameras is they're not live. Like I can't watch live video at all. And that's kind of lame. Um, that's you really want live video here. So, um, so what I would like, uh, to do is, you know, use something like blue iris or maybe motion cam Foss cam. Thank you, Francisco. That's right. Foss cam. Um, to get some camera input. Wow. Is there snow on my roof? Holy cow. Look at that. It did snow. It snowed last night. There's snow on my yard. Holy cow. <laughs> How about that? Um, anyways, but they don't work anymore. Uh, the, the Foscam and Amcrest don't integrate into Home Assistant super easy anymore. And I, I think the problem has to do with the, the new authorization system and tokens versus API passwords and that kind of stuff. So, um, unfortunately that's, uh, I, I'm, that's where I'm at. Hick vision. Okay. Everybody just keeps on saying Hick vision. So maybe that's what I need to do. I do have this one. I think I showed you guys before that somebody has sent me. Um, let's find the live desk scene. There we go. So I do have this one. Um, this is the brand Zozi. It's supposed to be, uh, work with blue Iris and all it's a POE camera. I don't have a POE, you know, whatever you want to call it, transmitter or whatever, right? The distributor, the power distributor, but you can also just hook up, uh, uh power to it here. So I'm going to do that. I just haven't, I just haven't done it, um, just yet, but it seems like a good camera. It's not pan tilt zoom. I really like pan tilt zoom. Um, I don't know if it's waterproof. It's got a nice little shade on it, but I don't know. I guess I should look really closely before I put it outside. Anyways, so this will be this will be an interesting one to see. This camera I think retails about oh I don't remember seventy eighty dollars maybe something like that. Poe switch power inserter. Yep, thanks Austin. Yeah, I don't have one of those. So, but we'll see. Um, I definitely want a few cameras that work really well. Um, but I wanted to, I guess what I would show you with, you know, with, with cameras, as far as like motion detection is this kind of, oops, let's go back. Uh, this, this kind of automation, right? This is how you make it work. Um, I was thinking about this and what if you have like, so you guys that have Hikvision or some other cameras, what do you do with, um, <laughs> what do you do with the motion detection? Like when you set up the camera, how do you set it up? You set up generic or is there a Hikvision component? How do you set them up? Uh, Amcrest. I like my Amcrest PTZ. It is, it is awesome. I don't know why mine's not working in Home Assistant. Vincent, is yours working in Home Assistant? Spiders love those shades for building webs. Oh, that's awesome. For right in front of the, right in front of the camera. <laughs> so uh, Unify are good, but there are better ones. Ubiquity Network Gear. That's great. Oh, for, do they do cameras too? Or we, you just were talking about that? $25 on Alley for a POE switch. D-Link cameras. Now just integrating with Home Assistant. Yeah, yaw cams. Oh, that's cool. I was hoping I was... Blue Iris's iOS app has a decent WAF, but it's crash prone. Um, you know, if we can get... So my understanding with Blue Iris, John, you can help me or whoever else was saying that they use Blue Iris, is... Um, how well it integrates with home assistant. Cause I, one of the reasons I really wanted to use it is because I understand that, uh, once, so you can have blue iris doing all of the, all of the, the legwork for things like motion detection and you can set out zones, right. And you can activate at different times and, and then you can just send that information of yes, motion was detection detected. And you can send a simple sort of, um, URL, um, that, home assistant can read so that you can see those images on home assistant instead of on the blue iris app or the blue iris uh, interact uh, interface and so that's why i want blue iris <clears throat> so great so stone wallace blue iris will send an mqtt message when motion is detected that is fantastic um oh be careful with PO passive variant expects a certain voltage oh okay well good 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 warning there nick i i probably won't do a poe I don't think I will. We'll see if I get to that point eventually, but I don't think I will. <clears throat> it, 
Is it just because it's easier to get power to certain places with PoE? Is that why we, is that why it matters? Is that why we want it? One of the best. Okay. Everything else is a rebrand of Hick Vision cameras, especially in the States. This one looks, I mean, this one might be a rebrand of Hick Vision camera. I don't know. This Zozi. So if I got, so you, what you're telling me, let me see if I understand what you're telling me. So you're telling me I get a Hick, get some Hick Vision cameras, right? Let's look at Hick Vision cameras. Um, where's the best place to get them? I, my first, my first go is always Amazon. Hick Vision. Oh, did you guys see my, um, I'm not trying to sell a bunch of things, but did you guys see my, my cool news on Facebook? So a year ago I was, you know, doing videos and just barely getting started. And Amazon was like, I, I kept trying to do, um, oh good. Oh, that's not too bad. Maybe we'll get some Black Friday sales on some of these. So this is, let's see, that's a dome, outdoor surveillance. Give me some POE. Give me some pan tilt. These ones, these ones look like they pan tilt, right? Lamp blue iris, motion detection. Well, I don't see SD card slot. Really? Does that not do pan tilt? Come on, man. Is this what yours looks like? Most of you guys, something like this. Guess maybe I don't want the dome. Yeah, pans and tilts, three axis. Oh, does it say three axis? What am I missing? Yeah, see, this is the one that looks like the one I have. These bullet cameras. I don't know. I guess those are good for some situations. Look for H. Okay. H. Point two six five. Ooh, ah. So see, I look, I look right past this, right? I don't want to spend two hundred dollars on a camera. I, it can't be that good. But is that what I need? Oh no, POE IP HD five megapixel dome. This one definitely moves. Look at it. That looks cool. I like that one. Motion detection, email alerts, power of internet, remote, mobile PC view. Okay, with IR cut, which allows you to adjust the angle of the view. Manual zoom will not decode each. Oh, really? Home system will not. Really reduces the bandwidth and CPU need in blue iris. Oh, okay. Well, then, um, but blue iris can, can post uh, something that home assistant can see easily, right? It doesn't move. Outdoor cameras are never PTZ. Oh, when there are, they're super expensive. Oh, okay. It's like the screenshot you just posted in the live stream Discord channel. Very good. Very good. Very good. Which I should also share, correct? Create an instant invite. Copy here. This is our uh, current Discord live chat as well, where we can post good links and stuff. Man, Paul, that looks great. That looks great. Can I link to Discord? There you go, brother. Um, yeah, I need... So I, I guess maybe what, what I'll probably have to do is I'll need some... I need a couple outside. I've, I like the backyard one. I like the front yard one. Maybe I won't need to... I want one that I can move around inside the house, a couple of them. I might just use my Amcrest ones with um, with Blue Iris will probably be the way to go. Yeah, so these are expensive, aren't they? Once you get to pan, tilt, zoom. But I guess they're pretty good, right? Get what you pay for, you get good stuff. Don't pay a lot, you get you get junk. Sometimes. Huh. Uh, older low res camera that uses more than five times the bandwidth of your newer H two six four cameras. Wow. Oh, something about sixty dollar Amcrest. Yeah. 
So the Amcrest ones, um, let's talk about that because that's, I've been pretty happy with it. The, see, I mean, they're pretty cheap. This one's only two megapixels. There was, was this is, the, this is the one I have. Is it the 2K? No, maybe it's this one. I can't remember. It looks like this, but that looks the same. That one says 2K. This one does not say 2K. Mine says 1080p on it. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, this one's mine right here. This is the one I have. But the trick is getting... So I... Yep, I bought it on whatever, July. So um, I just need to get this into Home Assistant. I need to be able to do like the motion detection and all that stuff and then get it into Home Assistant. It says Blue Iris. So I just need to work on it. I haven't been working on it very much. I was just, I was too excited about my Blink cameras recently and that's what I've been focusing on. But um, this one in it works great with calling commands through that. Troy, Troy, you can post the link in um, Discord and then I can approve it. Or if you post it here, I can try and approve it. What do you recommend for someone who can't use PoE? I don't use PoE. Um, these one, this camera here is Wi-Fi and it has, um, you know, just a regular plug. So, I mean, your choices are pretty limited, I guess. Uh, you have to have either access to an outlet in reasonable proximity, or that's why the Blink cameras are good only because they use battery. I'm in the right now. Did you hear that? That was awesome. That was Zachary. I'll talk to him about that later. Oh, and then he slammed the door. Fantastic. That's yeah, fun being a parent sometimes. Um, why don't I use the Amcrest component? The Amcrest component hasn't been working, Vincent. Is it working for you? It stopped working for me. It, well, it used to work, but now it stopped. I don't know why. Arlo security cameras, they have used batteries. Oh, cool. I have, an, I have one Arlo that I haven't used in forever. I should probably resurrect it, but I don't do it. Um, the Foscam PTZ, I have one of those too. So how are you guys getting them working in, in with Home Assistant? They stopped working for me and it, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the authentication and stuff, but it, they just won't, they won't show up anymore. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You have ubiquity power over internet cameras and they work with Home Assistant. So do you guys all use, uh, well, I guess we have, we have quite the variety, it sounds like, and that's good. Right? We've got a variety of people using a variety of different things. We've got um, Amcrest only has 10 second updates. No problem with Foscam there. Dang, what have I done wrong? I guess I got to go back and poke around with it some more. I mean, the cameras are working. They're, both of their apps are working. You need to update the Foscam camera. Maybe that's what I, maybe that's what it is. Um, I tried Googling just using the video stream, often called MPEG or something. Yeah, we tried that. Um, I probably just didn't try it enough. You know, we just didn't, I didn't stick with it. If I, yeah, I have so many priorities. Sometimes I get, some of this stuff gets lost and I, I do it for a while and then it just doesn't, it just doesn't um, climb to the top of the priority list. But I've been, I've been really happy with the, with the Amcrest and the Foscam as far as their pan tilt, you know, and how well they work and stuff like that. So. Coolest thing. What's the coolest thing that I've done with Home Assistant? You're a bit addicted to looking for something to do. Just in the coolest things, I will tell you, uh, that I've done, I really, really like, well, let's see. Um, coolest things that I've done. Oh, gosh, there's so many good ones. So if you haven't done um, your garage stuff yet, if you haven't done your garage door yet, you should do that. And then you should use the HA or not H A, what, what do you call it? MQTT car presence. MQTT car presence. This thing works fantastic. It's really, it's really good. And essentially it, you put it in your car, you plug it into a USB port. And when you go out to your garage and you get in your car, you, um, it, it turns on, it connects to your home assistant and it triggers your door to open. So all you have to do is turn the car on and within about a minute, the door opens. And then you back the car out. And then once this thing disconnects from your network, the door, uh, or it, it disconnects from your network, the home assistant says, oh, it's gone. The door closes on its own. When you pull up later in the day to go back to your house, as soon as you, about the time you get to the driveway, door opens up again, pull in, turn the car off, door closes. Like I never have to touch the door. It's pretty awesome. Um, 
it's pretty fun having more projects than time. Ain't that the truth? Hey, Tim, how's it going? The other, so, and then uh, Luma here at Arusha, he's got uh, his other project that I'm currently working on. And uh, Jay After Dark is, uh, has already built some of these and they're pretty awesome is these switch plates. So I've got a bunch of the parts for these. In fact, I should get the rest of the parts today from Arrow because I had bought them and I, and I had here, I can move some stuff over. I can show you what I've been working on, but so we can change the topic for a second to this. This is a, this is this little switch plate thing um, that goes, it's going to go in the wall. You can see what it does here, right? It's got all these menus and it goes in your light switch or whatever. And it's a touch screen. Um, and here it is. So it's this little touch screen here. These are about $15, I think. Um, and then you've got a D1 mini, you've got a power supply, and then, um, Luma's made these, uh, PCBs that you can, um, you, I, I don't think you can buy them from him anymore, but, um, he had a Tindy store where he was selling some of this stuff, but he definitely has made the, um, the, the print out available and you can send this to, uh, one of these PCB makers and seriously for a few dollars, they'll make them for you and send them to you. Um. So then I'm still, I'm at the phase here on this experimental one where I'm trying to get this um, menu, the menus to work here. And I just stopped a few days ago and haven't gone back to it. So, um, but this, this should be pretty cool. This should be pretty cool um, when it gets working. And so I'm excited about that. I am still, still talking about my favorite projects. I, oh, I wanted to tell you guys, <laughs> I locked myself in the bathroom yesterday. <laughs> Remember my bathroom, uh, my bathroom automation stuff with the door lock. Yeah. Backfired on me. I locked myself in the bathroom. So what happened was, um, so I, I went in there, put the toilet seat up, door locked. Great. Put the toilet seat down, door didn't unlock. Uh Oh, so I put the toilet seat up again, put it down again. Still didn't unlock. Had to do it like three times. Finally, eventually it unlocked and let me out. I don't, I think it was just a delay, you know, just an MQTT delay or something. It, it doesn't have to travel anywhere. I'm not using any, any, anybody else's servers or anything for that part, but yeah, I did get locked in the bathroom, but not for very long. And I just laughed the whole time. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it was bound to happen. I'm glad it happened to me and not somebody else. And then I, and now I laugh about it. And so if it happens to the kids or somebody else, then hopefully they'll be able to laugh about it too and not get upset about it. But, um, I like doing stuff like that. I like doing stuff that's kind of a little bit off the wall. Maybe they switch inside to unlock manually. Yeah, that I could do that too. I, you know, oh, the other thing was I could I could have totally unlocked it from my phone. Piece of cake, right? I don't know. No, fine, it's not working. Go to the phone. Uh, you know, click, click the lock on Home Assistant, and it would have opened. I didn't have my phone with me. Like, how often do you go to the bathroom and don't take your phone? <laughs> I didn't have my phone. Oh man. Do I mix traffic on my Wi-Fi router, MQTT, and everything else? Yeah, I just have it on one router. Uh, is that what you mean? Yeah, the wife factor would go down fast. Well, it's, uh, let's, you know, hopefully she'll laugh. Mine would now that I've been locked in. Again, that was the best part about it was it was me that got locked in because now I can I can laugh about it. HA switch plate in the bathroom. HA switch plates everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Just take your phone with you so that you can always get out because I couldn't do anything. I was thinking maybe I could yell out loud to, you know, the Amazon Echo and she would hear me through the door or something like that. <laughs> uh Oh, really? China on eBay. Just make sure you get the Hick Vision that are marked with English. Otherwise, it won't work. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, that, let's see. What else we got going? So what else were we going to talk about? So sorry. Oh, I could tell you about, I have the, I have the alarm. Oh, that was what, who was asking me about alarms? Um, no more analog poops. <laughs> Is Wink Hub a different, a, a decent choice for a friend who's not technical? Home system would be too hard for him. Um, you know, Ron, I don't know about the Wink Hub. I would, I would probably suggest um, Smart Things for somebody who isn't too into it. Um, Samsung Smart Things, but I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys all have probably a different experiences than I do. Um, I've never tried Wink. I've honestly never tried Smart Things either, but. Yeah. So Jason says smart things. I, um, I would, I would 
go with that. Don't have an echo in the bathroom. Yeah, I need an echo in the bathroom. I have one just on the other side of the wall. So I thought, well, if I just yell really loud through the wall, maybe they'll hear me. <laughs> um, there you go. So I think we got a few votes for smart things for your friend. I think that'd be probably a good one to go. Anyone knows how to get SSL working when you have home assistant running on Docker, racking a brain around it can't get it to work. I have not gone down the SSL uh, rabbit hole. Don't do Vera. I had one and it was very smart things is good. Okay, don't do Vera. There you go. Stone Wallace says don't do Vera. Set up home assistant for your friend. You gotta be careful with that. Hey Tony, how you doing, man? You you doing good? Healthy good? Good to see you. Um, yeah. Home assistant for your friend. Um, if you is if you're okay doing your friend's tech support, then then you know home assistant. I I think if you you can set it and forget it. I think reasonably well. If you don't set it to update anything, auto, certainly not automatically. Um, once you've got it running, you should be fine. You don't update your don't update your HasIO add-ons automatically. Don't update home assistant automatically. Just give it to him as it is right now and don't change it. And, um, you know, it should be technically fine for him. Um, but I think the nature of these open source progressive projects like this is that we have breaking changes. There's a list of breaking changes every time. So you have to, you know, if you don't want to have to deal with that for your friend, then don't send them to update. And then you should be able to still use home assistant. Still in the hospital, Tony? That's a bummer, man. Well, I hope you're feeling okay. Wish you the best. Um, there you go. Hey. That sounds like just what I said, real Denzel. <laughs> uh, touch upon command lines that you use in the Tasmoda console. Can't seem to, to be able to send multiple commands. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, let's pull up something. I don't remember. Oh, I disconnected that. Let's find one. Here, we'll pull up. We'll pull up Sonweb. We'll pick a device. Let's pick um, one that I don't care if I mess with a little bit. Boy's closet seems to be down. Unreachable. Oh, somebody flipped off the switch, probably. Turkeys. All right. Um, let me find one that I don't use much. Office. There's one office wall. I could tinker with that one and not care. There it is, 32. Okay, so we'll go, we'll go here. And um, all right, so if you go to the console, if you wanted to do more than one command at once, you do backlog, oh, fantastic, there it is again. Oh, good, backlog, and then whatever you wanted to do. So we can do, um, oh, let's see, what, what should we do? Is it, um, we'll just do power. Power one, and well, let's let's try a couple other things. Let's do switch, switch retain one power. This because I know these are retain one like that, and it's going, going. Oh, I think this one has an old version that doesn't use power retain. Um, what commands are you trying to do? When I just didn't think so. Even. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I am going to run out of IP addresses pretty soon. Um, did that make sense to you? Who was asking about um, the backlog commands? <laughs> yes, you can, Tristan. You can you can put all of your home assistant stuff or whatever on a different router with a different. Um, with a different subnet and everything if you want to. Certainly can. Some people do that. And that does help offload if you're having others. Don't forget to get... Oh, what did I just do? What did I not do? Don't... Oh, does that go in between them? Duh. Thank you, Travis. That was why it didn't work. So it's got to be here, right? Power retain one and then this, right? And then this, and then if I just do power, power turns it off, right? So I can do that. Yeah. Okay, that just turned it on. There you go. Okay, so maybe that's what it was. Is that what you were missing? Did you see that? 
So it was the it was the semicolon. So backlog, and then whatever command you want, and then semicolon, and then whatever other command you want, and then semicolon, and then whatever other command you want, and then semicolon. Oh, you don't need a semicolon on the last one. See you, Quan. Yeah, but you got to put backlog first. Oh, can you not see it? I'm sorry, guys. Got it off to the side there. So yeah, you put backlog space, the command you want, and the payload, I guess you would say, and then semicolon. And then the command you want, payload, semicolon. And you can make a list. You can have 30 things in that list, and it'll all, it'll all just go. Oh, I, I did power one. I, st I turned the power back on. What I should have done was power toggle. Anyways. Power zero. Yeah. Did that help? Did that help? What other commands did you want to do in, in uh, Tasmoda that you needed help with? It's possible to show the values in Tasmo admin like Wi-Fi strength and, oh, and all that in Home Assistant. Yes, of course. Of course, of course, of course. So you would have to do a template. So all this, you see all this information that I've got right here for like status, all this stuff, Wi-Fi, AP, MAC address, uh, whatever else is in here. Anything that you can get if you do... What's that command, Travis, for, uh, is it telly? If you just do that, no. What's the command where you just get everything? Status 10, right? Is that status 10 where you just get a bunch of stuff? No. If you just do status, is that what it is? Status gives you some stuff. Um, so yes, you can. Just like you get the temperature or anything else, you can, you... You just have to, I guess, parse is the word. You parse out um, what you, the information that you want based on the topic. And then the information is going to be, you know, inside of, you'll have to nest it the, the right way inside of your, um, inside of your request, right? So if we go here and we'll look at the temperature as an example, Travis, is, Travis can whip this out for you in no time. Status zero or various numbers. Oh, status zero is what gives them all. Okay, we'll go back to that in a second. So when you go here, um, I want I want my temperature press template. There. Okay, so you'll have a template. You'll have to have a template something like this. Okay, where you'll have a topic. So let's go back and forth between these. So we'll go here, we'll, we'll do status zero, status zero, there you go. Okay, so then you can get, oh, there you go, see, look at that. Look what, look what Travis is spitting out for us here. He's got tele SNF washer state, and then the so here, if you wanted to tell, okay, so that's going to do, so this is his, this is his Sonoff washer is the, is the device. And he wants to know about the state. Oh, and then he's going to have, um, <laughs> and then, and then this is what the template would look like to grab the Wi-Fi strength out of there. All right. Did you get that? Thanks a ton, Travis. Travis is a Tasmoda master. I thought I knew a thing or two about Tasmoda, and then Travis came along and I said, whew, Travis is the Tasmoda master. <laughs> um, if you have specifics, you want a, a specific thing you want to grab out of there, let us know real quick and we can try and whip up something for you. Um, yeah, I am going to run out, aren't I? I'm going to have to change my subnet. I'm, I only got, I, I'm easily over 100. Well, not, not, it's not true. I have at any given moment at this point, I have about 80 connected devices, but that is steadily growing. It, a few months ago, it was only 60. And so now it's 80 and I'm sure it's going to continue to grow. So, um, alarm system in Belgium works with home assistant. Take care of Dr. Z answering a few of my questions. There's set times for live streams. The live streams, Tristan, I try and do Sunday mornings has been the most popular. I mean, we got 200 folks watching and at this time for me, it's Sunday morning. And so this time is, is the most common time, but there are weekends when I just can't do it at this time, like next weekend coming up uh, on Sunday, I have to work. So I will try and do one on Sunday, but it will probably be, you know, much later in the day for me. Um, so maybe 10 hours from now I try and, and, um, 
post something about when I'm going to do it, if it's going to be a different time. If I don't post something that says, you know, it's going to be this time or that time, then you can expect it to be about this time of day. Um, the other thing to do is when you go to YouTube, if when you hit the bell, so there's subscribe and then there's a little bell. If you hit that little bell, then it will send you, should send you a notice that says Dr. Z just went live, you know, so you can tune in. Um, I would like to do more of them. I would like to do more of them. I, maybe there's a, there's a possibility that we'll get to a point where, I mean, I'm already doing more live streams than sort of production videos, I'd say. Um, cause production videos take a lot of time and, um, the, you know, the, I get more projects done if I don't spend as much time on videos, but I still want to make sure that any of these, um, live streams that we do are very, are fairly focused and we get some good learning in them so that if anybody sits down to watch it or listen to it, at least, uh, that they'll get some stuff out of it. So that's why I've been trying to do topics and it's an evolution. You know, we're going to get, we're going to get better and better. Um, this live stream, I am going to have to cut short here in about probably five or 10 minutes because, uh, we got a lot, we had a busy day today, unfortunately. So it's not going to be, I've been doing about an hour and a half. I'm going to have to cut this one out in an hour. Um, 70 plus devices, Brian. Yeah. Go with an edge router in England at 6 PM. So that's perfect time for you guys. You love the live stream. Good. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. New subscribe. Austin. Thanks, man. I think he says Austin. I can't read it very well. I need glasses these days. If I have to do a presentation for the university, what automations would you choose or recommend to impress people? The bathroom. Everybody loves the bathroom. <laughs> um, let's see. What would be some good ones to do? Um, so you can watch. Uh, I'm going to publish my alarm system stuff. Um, I should get the video. It's like 98% done. Seriously. I just need to watch it a couple more times and, you know, make sure that I've fine tuned everything that I'm happy with it. And then I'll post it. There's a lot of cool stuff that I mixed into there. So I have a triggered, a trigger, you know, an opening, opening the door with the alarm on. And then it's, it sounds off a bunch of different responses, you know, um, Amazon echoes, talks, lights, blink and flash sounds come out of other speakers. I could do things like door locks and stuff. Um, so I, I think people like that kind of a response. I think that's, what's gonna, that's, what's gonna, um, uh, impress people. I have a couple other ones that are just really simple that I think would be that are. I even had a friend that sent me a text that said, wow, that was really cool. I was at your house and you know, like some kids were playing or whatever. And the back door was open and all of a sudden your Amazon Echo said, Hey, the back door's been open for too long. Can somebody please close it? And she thought that was so cool that that would do that. And so it, it can be simple things like that. You know, I've got one that does the same thing for the fridge, for the fridge in the garage. Cause we don't see the fridge in the garage. It doesn't have us. The one in the kitchen has a little chime if it left, it's left open. But if you leave the one in the garage open now, uh, Amazon Echo will say, Hey, the garage fridge, somebody left the garage fridge open, please go close it. So those kinds of things are pretty cool. Um, and in a, be able, be, yeah, that's cool. I think it, when you have some sort of a voice response or voice triggering also, so tell Amazon Echo to do something and a bunch of other stuff happens. That's pretty cool. Um, what other ideas do you guys have for, for his presentation? Uh, I'll make a note to add the Wi-Fi signal example to the Tasmo wiki in the home assistant section. If there isn't one already, thanks, man. That's a great idea. Um, thank you, Travis. Thanks for all your work on that. Love, I love what you're doing. Travis is doing some good live stuff too. That's fun. Uh, lure the bad guys into the bathroom and have it lock them in. That's a great idea, Austin. That's a great idea. We'll do that. You're going to like my video. I, I joke around, obviously I always joke around, but, um, the video for, uh, for the alarm, I have a little, some fun jokes. Travis's YouTube channel is DigiBlur DIY. Let me link it to you. YouTube.com DigiBlur DIY. There we are, right there, right to it. Oh, that reminds me, probably, let's do this as the last thing. I'll, I'll copy this in, paste for everybody. Can you ask if anyone has watched any of my videos looking for feedback audio? Can you understand me? I, well, let's see. Have you guys watched Tony's videos? I did. I liked it, Tony. You're, you definitely have a, you know, good Australian accent going there, but I could understand you. 
Um, is it is it T Lamont? Is that what it is on YouTube too? I know I'm subscribed to you, so it's probably over here somewhere. Tony's a genius. I want to see Tony do some more stuff. That's not him. <laughs> is it is it 941 also? There he goes. Videos. So here's a few. Here, I'll give you guys Tony's as well. And is that your feed? No, we want your... We want your channel. What is going on here? That... Why can't I go to your page? It's weird. Something funny is happening here. Better turn the bell on too. I don't know why it says feed. User feed. It's just showing what videos you like. Here, well, we'll do this. All right, silly. I don't know why it wasn't working very well, but anyways, so check out Tony's videos. Tony does smart things and give him some feedback, whether you can hear him and all that stuff. But, um, Tony's got some great, he's got some great ESP 32 knowledge. Um, all right. Use 10 and you'll never run out of <laughs> addresses. 16.7 million. I don't know. I might run out. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, the video is about 30 seconds or so behind the chat window. Yeah, it, it is. They do delay it. I don't know why exactly, but they do put a delay on it. Um, oh, you know what? I It's because this, it's a funny thing with YouTube TV. I don't know if you guys use YouTube, YouTube TV, but uh, we do. It's you pay and then you pay a monthly thing. It's like instead of cable and it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I get all the football games and everything I want. So that's what we use, but I have to be logged in as my main address, not or my main account, not my brand account. So I have to be logged in as Justin Aiden, not Dr. Z's. So that this browser, I was watching football a lot yesterday. And so this browser was all logged in as, as Justin Aiden and not Dr. Z's. And so if I go to Dr. Z's, so if I switch accounts to Dr. Z's, now... Maybe I can go to his, no, I still can't, I don't know, but now I definitely will find him over here. There he is. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, hi bud. All right, um, so what I was going to say as we, we're going to finish up here because it's, uh, it's been my, it's been an hour right on the, right on the nose. So we'll, we'll kind of call this the signing off, but, uh, and I was worried about losing all the sports, man, go blue, Phil. Ooh, go blue. It's been a great time. No, YouTube TV is fantastic. You guys, if you haven't done it, see now it's not going to let me do it because <laughs> I'd have to switch back. <laughs> but anyways, YouTube TV is great and you'll get all your sports and everything else live and TV shows and you can save it. So you can say, I like, you know, Michigan football and it will then save all your Michigan football games. That are, That's fantastic, right? It's like automatic DVR. It's really pretty cool. Um, Bella and Sonoff is Tony. No, no, the, the Shelly better than Sonoff is, uh, is, uh, Rob, Rob, uh, the hookup. Yeah. Almost 20,000. That was what I was going to say. So here's the, here's the ending for the day is we are almost at 20,000. Look at that. Can you believe that? It was, uh, it was December when I hit a thousand last December. So it's been crazy. It's been crazy cool. So what should we do? Let's get some, let's spend the last like two minutes here with some ideas from you fellas here that are watching this live stream to see what, uh, what should we do when we hit 20,000? What kind of stuff do you want to, what, what do we do? Do we do more live streams? We do giveaways. We do, well, I don't know. Like, what should we do? Give me some ideas. And then we'll get the kids in and we'll sign off. Justin Carver subscriber. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Party. Definitely have a party, right? I'd invite everybody over for a party. Free HASPs for everybody. <laughs> well, we could probably do that. I could do a HA switch plate giveaway. That's an easy thing to do. Oh, house tour. That's not a bad idea. Uh, is Battle Bots on YouTube TV? I don't know. Curmudgeon, I'll have to hit me up in Discord and ask me again later and I'll check it for you. Live stream Discord chat to discuss automations. Oh, another one. Thanks. 
Win, Mr. Win. I know how to say that. Thanks for subscribing. Fly out to Texas and school me on Home Assistant. <laughs> Contest where you go to the winner's house and automate something. That would be awesome. Chris, that's a great idea. Oh my gosh. I don't think I can do that for 20, but I would love that. I've totally thought about that. Um, we all give me $5 when I hit 20,000. Well, thank you, Jason. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't, we, we'll do it the other way. Well, I'll give you guys something. How about that? Um, moving soon. So really got to check out Home Assistant switch plate thing. You're, uh, you're a good man, Jason. Thank you, buddy. Uh, maybe a rewind. Ooh, like a star. Oh, that's cool. Pimp my house. Chris wins. <laughs> Chris wins. Where you live, Chris? <laughs> if you live in Utah, we'll do it. I do have Patreon. If you go to, thank you very much, um, Austin for asking. If you go to drz.com, I've got, it's kind of jacked up right now. Something happened. I don't know. It, it got missed. The formatting got messed up. I try and keep this as a sort of central hub for everything, right? So all the projects that I do, I eventually post on here. See what I mean? Like it got all messed up. Like, I don't know. It's all crazy right now, but we've got some cool stuff on here. If you guys haven't done it, go here and click on this map and you can put a little tag where you live. Um, that's been, that's been a lot of fun. These are like the most common product products that I use. Um, all this is all messed up. I don't know what has what went wrong on this website? But anyways, it's got all the links. Oh, you can't even see them. It's got links for Patreon and and Twitter and um, Instagram and Discord and Home Assistant forums and a bunch of stuff here. And then I think actually, if you go to the YouTube, if you go to the YouTube page, if you go to my YouTube page. Right here, you can also see there's Patreon and there's Instagram and there's Twitter and then there's drz.com. There's links right there in that page. Um, so, yeah, it'd be cool. Question about, show this. Okay. You live in Canada? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Austin's in Utah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm in Utah. I'm in, we might be able to do that. Andrew, thanks, man. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. My kids are here at the, at the door. They're getting ready to barge in to do the sign off and I can hear them start to fight because they're like pushing up against the door. Like it's Christmas morning. <laughs> so we better let them in. Um, uh, offsite control being notified. Uh, but take the discussion to discord Lance and, um, we'll get some, we'll get some more people and, and we'll be able to give you some uh, good answers or some good suggestions for that. So I would love the idea. I love that idea, Chris, of going to somebody's house and doing some stuff. I think what we will do, I'll, I'll toy with the idea. It's probably going to happen in the next week or two. So it'll probably be around Thanksgiving. So a house tour, I think I could do that. We'll do a house tour. I think I could do an HA switch plate giveaway. I think I could do that. And, um, and then we'll get tuned up. Maybe when we get to, we'll have to, we'll have to set that as a, um, as a mark to, uh, in the future to go to somebody's house. That would be super cool. When you have a free minute, BattleBot YouTube TV. Thank you, Prof. Okay, here's the kids. Come on in, kids. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, it's always got a new pretty dress. Come on, it's girls. Not it's not new? No. Okay, you guys come on and get in front of me. Oh, kick over my water bottle. Okay. We got everybody in the picture? No. Yeah, no. Where's Zoe? Car? Zoe's not in. Okay. What's two car? Uh, I don't know. I think it's Canadian, maybe. Canadian money? Okay, is I everybody in? I Who's up there? In. Okay, let's move this down so it doesn't blast everybody. And then we're going to do, as always, thanks for watching. Please come on to yours. Okay, ready? One. As always, thanks, as always, thanks for watching. Until, Until next time. Adios. 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 <laughs> the Discord link on the video stream is expired. Okay, well, let's do another one. Let's do another one quick. Dad, what does adios mean? What does adios mean? It means bye-bye. It means goodbye. It means... <laughs> Generate a new link. Copy. Okay, here's a Discord link. Here's a Discord link. You guys can go there and you can continue your discussions. Sorry to cut it short today, but thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Adios. Adios. <laughs> Thank you, Alian. Thank you. <laughs>